welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show, especially as we have such a wonderful guest for you. Yes, it's Heather Small. And here is what happened when I caught up with her. Heather Small, it's great to see you in person. <laughs> good to what be here. a real treat for our Saturday night viewers. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Yourself? Yes, I'm very well, thank yeah, you. It's um, good to be here. I love you because we arrived and we both said it's a bit cold, we need the heating on. Yeah, everyone who knows me knows that I don't I don't like the cold. Unless I can slumber in a bikini here. in the room, then it's not warm enough for me. <laughs> exactly, but we're nice and toasty now, so it's all good. And I couldn't wait for you to get here because I am a big fan of the masked singer. You don't understand the levels that I go to on Saturday nights before my show, uh, just watching it and guessing everyone. And I always think I'm actually a pro at guessing, but I didn't guess you. Yeah, I, I really tried hard to... to um disguise my voice because it's not a singing competition it's a guessing game mm. so I wanted to uh, wherever I landed when um, when I was going to go out I just wanted no one to be able to guess that it was me because people were saying that my voice is really distinctive and I always said I wouldn't do it because my voice is distinctive mm. and, I'd, and, and I've been singing the way that I've sung for like the past 30 years so that was for me that was the challenge to not be um, outed not so that they didn't guess who I was. Did anyone guess that your family? No one guessed at all. No except one. Except for wow. apparently, my mother was watching with my sister, and she said straight away, "I know that voice." But about two weeks before, she was grilling me, saying, "Did you do something for TV?" And I'm like, "Cause she loses." Love your she loses the, Oh, she's hilarious. Honestly, she, she oh, she's a heartbeat. And uh, she, we, we, I, I call her the bloodhound because nothing gets past her. Absolutely nothing. So right. she said to my sister, I know that voice. And she sung, heard me sing crazy before. So she, she knew, she knew, but she was the only one who guessed. And like I said before, you know, you can hide everything from, from most people, but not your mum. Not mama. your mum. Mum's not nice. your mama. And what was it like? Sorry, I was so intrigued by the mask singer. Go what ahead. was it like uh, filming, like in the costume and everything? Like how Well, is, is that? You know, it's, it's there's deep undercover secrecy. Oh, okay. Nobody knows anything. And, and, and you have to put on a disguise or a mask up, not, not in your costume, before you even get to the studio. So mm. while the driver's driving, you're there putting on a mask and a, and a hoodie and gloves so that people can't see anything, not even your eyes, because they have a, these hats that have visors and the visors come down so low. I mean, you can see out of the visor, but nobody can really see in. So they can't see your skin colouring, nothing, nothing. And if you're a certain height, they, they won't be able to guess mm. your, 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 your gender. So it's really good how they, how they, uh, they, they hide you, but it is hard to keep it a secret at first. Yes, I but feel like I wouldn't be able to keep it a secret. And, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're, you, you don't ever use your real name, but right. then you use your name and then you have two um, names that aren't your own. And yeah, it is out, absolutely next unbelievable. Level, isn't it? It's next level. But then that's the part. That's the fun part of it. So mm. I thought if they're going to go to all that trouble. I'm going to do my best not to be guessed. And you know, the costume itself. It, my one was quite a, mm. quite um, hefty. Yeah. But they made it as comfortable as they could make it. Right. Had harness and and I said that I am. And then they had the belt around the waist to keep it on. And I asked for the for the belt to be more of a harness and lower my hips so that I could so that I could yeah. sing. Yeah. And um, so they will adapt it to you. And you don't, you're not in the costume for that, that long. And of course I wasn't because I was smoking off first. It wasn't that long. But that shouldn't have happened. But when, but when you, uh, you break, you, 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 they give you drinks and everything. And there was lots of snacks. I'd be hungry. There, yeah, I was going to say. There was say, lots of snacks. And, uh, and they had, um, and my room was really warm. So, you know, I, I was all right. I was all right. Oh. There's, there's worse things to be doing. That's well, for sure. Well, like I say, you completely fooled me and I thought yeah. I was really good. And I thought to myself, so. yes, job done. Because when I did take off the uh, mask, the headdress, they was, everyone was just so surprised and the reaction yeah. was brilliant. It was good TV. It got everyone talking. Yeah. Everyone, all my friends the next day were like, did you know? Did you know who I was? I was like, oh yeah. So, right, uh, no, brilliant stuff. And we're going to go into the first song uh, today, How Can I Love You More? Mm -hmm. uh, originally released in 1991 and re-released in 1993. Uh, become a massive hit. Whose idea was it to re-release it? Um, yes, because when we first released the very first single, it was... Um, um, Colour My Life and the B-side, this is me showing my age now, it was How Can I Love You More and the radio stations picked up on How Can I Love You More and the DJs and so we got a, and we got a remix and put it out and it just, it just flew. Yeah, yeah so and, and 
when the guys first played me the song, they let me go away and uh, work on it and just brought a bit of more gospel element to it and mm. stuff. And, and at the time, you know, the lead writer um, was in love and I wanted to capture that. But there was that, Aww. there was a whole thing in the 90s and that feeling of togetherness. And so I wanted to capture that effervescence. Yeah. And I think we did it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to check out the video and I will be catching up more with Heather on the other side of this. Uh, Emma's for Mike Pickering. Now, I want to rewind, Heather, how everything started for you because you have this absolutely incredible voice. Is that natural? You know, did you always want to get into music? How did that come about? Um, I wanted to sing for a very long time, since I was a girl but I used to be really quite shy. Oh. And uh, I used to be quite a good dancer. Oh. And the dance teacher said to me, Heather, there's an auditions that put pineapple, you must go. I was too shy to go. And it turned out it was Arlene oh. Phillips. Was it? Yeah, this is oh, long, I, yeah, a very, very long time ago and I didn't go. And so I really, really love singing. I just love the way it makes me feel. Mm. And I'd listen to people like Gladys Knight, Dorothy mm. Moore, um, Nina Simone, and I thought, if I could make one person feel like that, then job done. So I, I um, used to look through uh, The Melody Maker, which is defunct. Oh, and you have to be a I certain do. age to know that. Oh, well, I the am a certain age. The Melody Maker. It, so I used to look at the back pages, you know, when they advertise for musicians, things mm. like that. And I think it's sad that those kind of days are gone, really. Because, it is. You, you know, you go for an audition or you find your tribe. And so they had a list of singers, uh, one, one, one one ad was looking for a singer. They had list some singers and one of them was Gladys Knight. And people didn't usually talk about Gladys Knight and I love her voice, that rich, warm tone. And so I went along and they said, yeah, they liked my voice and that was my first band, Hot House. And that's how oh. I joined the music industry. So uh, I went along, there was uh, two guys. They, one of them lived on the 14th floor. I lived on the 14th floor. I thought, is this an omen? Oh. And uh, yeah, so they had a couple of songs and I auditioned one of the songs and you could hear, I was like so, so nervous. Oh. And on the recording, you could hear the rustling of the paper because I was just so, so nervous. My knees were jumping. Oh, so I didn't have feeling, any technique, but I yeah. had a sound. And yeah. they called me back and they said, you know, we love your sound. We'd love you to join the band. So there I was, so I was a band member. Wow. Yeah, I was happy. Looking at your success, Heather, I mean, a string of hit songs selling over 10 million worldwide in the early 90s. I mean, did you ever foresee that? Uh, no, because we'd all been in bands before that hadn't quite make, made it. So I yeah. thought by the time I got dropped with my first band that I would mm -hmm. sing, but it would be like a hobby or I'd have to do something else on the side to a, a real job to make some, <laughs> some, some money. Yeah. And uh, so everything was a bonus. And like I said, the other... The other guys in the band, they also were in bands that almost made it. Mm. And so when we got a bite, we just worked, re we worked hard. Yeah. We worked really, really hard. Yeah, people really don't hard. see that bit behind the scenes. Keep today. that momentum going. Mm. And you know, people are like, oh, it's a conveyor belt. It's not, no, it's just yeah. hard work. It's mm. just hard work and, and, and trusting in your own taste and ability mm. and working as hard as you possibly can. There is no, mm. no um, short, short um, cut no. to, to, to success. It's just hard work. It's and, and, and Good and advice for people and, right now, isn't it? There's, there's no shortcut. No, Even with just, the reality shows or whatever, you still got to work hard. You just you? got to keep going. Yeah, you really do, and and and, and hone your hone your craft. Uh, I always people used to say to me uh, when I first started, "What what do you want?" And I used to say, "You know, to keep singing and to be better at what I do." And I think in that sense, yeah, I've ticked those boxes because uh, I've kept singing and I am better at what I do. I I've got more tools in my toolbox, and the pleasure of singing is still as great as ever. Ah, oh, I love that. I mean, I can't sing a note, Heather. You'd be so horrified. I had one singing lesson. No, I'd still encourage you, I'm sure. <laughs> no. I mean, if, if you smiled like that and it made you happy. I, I can't think, believe I'm I'd telling Heather to floor this, but I, I went to a singing lesson with my friend and she made us both sing something to obviously gauge what we were like. Mm. And my friend went away with Celine Dion to practice. And mm. I went away with um, Britney Spears, um, the most basic so song, uh, Sometimes. And I just thought, it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm tone deaf, Heather. There's nothing I can do about it. At least you realise there's some people who still got on to make a career. <laughs> At least I'm being honest about it. I'm completely tone deaf. It's never going to happen. But anyway, let's go into the next song, uh, One Night in Heaven. Uh, what is it like? Like when you perform this song, I bet everyone just knows the words and it goes crazy, right? Yeah, there's this is this celebration, and uh, we, we 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 filmed the video 
in Sijits. So it, so it always has good memories. Mm -hmm. And as the years have gone on and I've sung the song, I'm able to do different things with it. So this, right. is, what, that's, this is a nice thing now. I trust, I trust my ability, or well, yeah. most times when I'm on stage. Before, before I get on stage, I don't trust anything. <laughs> I'm totally terrified. Well, but, even now? Oh my goodness. No. It's, oh, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. Mm -mm. People don't believe it. I can't but I think, that. yeah, because you know, it's before you work for a reputation and now you work mm. to keep that reputation. And my standards are really, really high. So even if other people say, you know, that was great, you know, for me, it has to feel great. And yeah, there's so many yourself. elements that can, yeah. that can, can change. And mm -hmm. you have to be able... But now, you've got, I've got the experience to um, grab any element that, that, that goes rogue and, and make mm. it my own. Yes, like it. Well, we're going to play out the song right now. Uh, here it is, uh, number six in 1993. Enjoy. One night in heaven, one night in heaven. One night in we have some questions uh, from some of our lovely viewers. Oh. Uh, Melanie has written and said, uh, what do you enjoy aside from music? I like the theatre. Me too. I, I absolutely Favourite love it. Favourite show? I, that's, quite, that's quite hard. <laughs> Book of Mormon is, is quite good. It's coming back to it's, the West it's, End. It's, 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 yeah. you know, I, and I, and I, do, and I, I am God-fearing. I do believe in... But I think to myself, self-expression is very, very, very clever. I went to see Julius Caesar, and that was oh. audience participation. I went with my son. Oh, and... Yeah, that, that, that I was enthralled. You know, it's uh, I, I see Beverly in a few things. You know, I love. I went her. to see her the other day in The Drifters Girl. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. You need to see that. Yeah, she's she's very very good. So um, yeah, there's some some things that I uh, there was one that's set in the Congo and I and I um, really enjoyed that. So live live theatre, I love it because I'm like a child. I think, what are they going to do next? <laughs> and you see somebody's talent just there some you could just touch it and you think they've done all that hard work mm. and they're taking us to a different place so i love theater and and i do like and i do love film so um, yeah yeah i, I like I lo the live performance thing theater i think yes. that's my absolute absolute favorite that is. i love the whole thing i like yeah. getting the ice cream in the interval uh, oh well well i don't usually <laughs> you don't have the ice cream oh, that's it's, not, going it's, down, not, it's not usually it's not usually vegan <laughs> <laughs> so, but I would do that, some vegan ones, but they're all getting a lot better now. They I are. mean, of the vegan chocolates and everything. Yeah, yeah, you have to have some willpower as you eat your weight in ice cream and thinking in the. They're quite not even in, these not, days, it's not like even five pounds for an yeah, ice cream. Yeah, not even in the interval. Save you pennies, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to munch it all for I, I know, I know, but we love my theatre and we love supporting it. Oh, uh, we God, really I do. Absolutely, I love it, yeah. I love it, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go into the next song. Uh, don't look any further. Uh, now, I know that you shot this video in Berlin. Is that right? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And the, the wall had come down. So it was very, very memorable. And what I remember the most was that uh, there was bits of wall for sale everywhere you went. <laughs> I think to myself, it, was, it might have been like the Great Wall of China. There was that much wall to be bought. So, <laughs> but it was, uh, it, was, it was really interesting. You mm. felt that, that shift. Um, uh, uh, and it, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed most of the trips that we took with, with, with the band because mm. we just think to ourselves, it wasn't like our, our videos were that deep and meaningful. <laughs> Usually they were just based in nice, in nice, nice parts locations. of the world. Yeah. So, and, and, and it's nice to go away and do what you've got to do and, mm. uh, uh, and the camaraderie and the fun that we used to have as a band, you know, in the early days. Yeah. Oh, good memories. We're going to check out the video right now. I want to talk about your upcoming tour, Heather. Uh, it's starting March the 17th. And I was actually at the London Palladium the other week. I went to see Panto. Love a bit of Panto. And uh, I saw the poster mm -hmm. with you appearing there. It's going to be on March the 27th. What yes. a venue. So, yeah, it's a fantastic venue. Iconic venue. Yeah. And this is why um, I, 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 I'm, if I... If I could, I'd bite my nails down to the quick. It, it, you know, I, I love it. And, and I think I've invited more people than I've sold tickets. I'm like, yeah, come, come I'm playing London. Can you not come? Come along. Come, come. And 
It, it is nice because I feel like I've got two hometowns. When I when I play oh. um, Manchester and when I play London, it's the same same kind of feeling. So I'm inviting everyone, <laughs> everyone that I know, to come out and and, yeah. have, and party with me. And that's the thing, you see, yeah. I, I get to see people at their happiest, and you miss mm. that with this pandemic. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, I get to see people at their best, enjoy themselves. And I think it's been so difficult. It has been so difficult oh, that we do need some respite. Definitely. So I see the tour as some kind of respite, and I want to get out there and get on stage and do the best I can and have people forget their troubles just oh. for like an hour and a half. And, you know, you know, leave them at the door, come in, and I know we're going to have to pick them back up when we leave. But you know what? For that, for that period of time, let's, 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 so let's totally, totally yeah, go for it. Yeah, because music's medicine. It so, is. And it is. songs are so uplifting. It, is. it does balm make you for feel the soul. really good. And, and that's how I always feel when I sing. And, and, and then yeah. you get an audience that's um, receptive. There is oh. absolutely nothing like it. You can wow. do all the Zoom shows you like. <laughs> There is nothing like a live audience. And this is why we do it. This is why we're performers. Because yeah. you need that interaction and that instant interaction with an audience. And I feel when I, when I am singing live, that that, that, art, that that audience participation will elevate my, my, my performance. Because yes. you feed off that energy. Yes. Oh, well, we want to be there. Uh, get tickets. That's right. Get tickets. We're going to get details on the screen below. <laughs> I want to come to the Palladium one. You'll have to. Any, uh, You'll tickets have left. To. We'll have to see, won't we? But we'll check it out on the website. And uh, we cannot wait for that. Uh, we're going to go into the next song, my favourite, Moving On Up. I mean, this is played at so many different functions, isn't it? And uh, birthdays and everything. Did you ever know that it would be such an iconic song? Uh, um, I think you just record something to the best yeah. of your ability. First and foremost, you think to yourself, do I love it? Can I make it, will I make it mine? And, and that's what I do. When I, when I heard, the guys were saying, you know, we've got this kind of idea and I'd sing, it, sing to it. And, and obviously it was based on the kind of personality that I am. So I thought, yeah, I can, I, I can do this. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I thought about how I'd approach the vocal. I wanted it to be a, a deeper tone, a richer tone. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the deeper your voice, the more authority people um, place in it. So... Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted a deep tone. I wanted it to be sassy. I wanted to for it to that you don't take any mess, but you can have fun. But you know, when 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 it's time, it, you, you draw the line. So uh, so it and it can go for so many things from a relationship to yeah. to, to, to to a work situation that uh, something something that's not right for you. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is on my playlist. I love strutting down the King's Road to this one. Oh, that's what I call it. I call it my strut song. Oh, do you? I do. There we go. I get I'm on with stage, you on that, Heather. <laughs> Boom, let's go. So we want everyone strutting around your living room right now. Enjoy. <laughs> We've got another question from one of our viewers, uh, Lisa, who says, uh, what was it like when you were a contestant on Strictly? Uh, you know, strictly. strictly is a bittersweet kind oh. of experience. I loved, I absolutely loved the dancing. Monday to Friday, dance like an angel. On the <laughs> Saturday, <laughs> we had to do the judging. And oh. they could be harsh. They, yeah. they were harsh to a sister. Oh. So, um, yeah, I didn't, and I, and I get really nervous. I get really nervous doing what I do as a singer. So going out, dancing, dancing. and I love dancing. Yeah. So when there was, you know, and, and I still keep in contact with my partner, Brian Fortuna. And a okay. few years back before the pandemic, the year before the pandemic, I was in LA and we went to um, a Latin club. Oh. And, you know, he said to me, Heather, you dance better than any day. <laughs> Either you dance, <laughs> any Saturday you dance, strictly. <laughs> any Saturday that you dance. And I thought, yeah, because I'm just enjoying myself. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm not being judged. And and I think Aww. when I first went out, I had all the confidence in the world because we'd. Work, and then the comments were just so harsh. Aww. And somebody would say something, and then they'd say the exact opposite when we're off screen. Say, no, you did really well. You were great. And Aww. so, but th and that's the thing, you know. Mm. There, there's a fav They have favourites, and I wasn't one of them. And I knew that. But it was a, it was a good experience. Uh, it was fun. Lovely costumes. Oh, I, 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 I loved the dressing up. I loved the dancing. It was so, so much fun. Yeah. But it's just Saturday nights. <laughs> you asked I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we've been on from that. Okay. Thanks Swiftly. for the question, though, Lisa. Swiftly. Anyway, um, search for the hero. I've broken your heart. <laughs> Search for the hero. Uh, then we've got another question here um, from Leah that says, uh, were you surprised how many charities and organisations uh, have used this to forward their campaigns? Um, it is surprising. It's humbling. I think to myself, you, you, you sing a song and it means so much to you and you do want to 
people to understand. You do want them to be able to relate. So, you know, I put heart and soul into the vocal, and I think that came across. You know, I've done a lot with the song and the NHS and, and lots of different charities, lots of different charities, and, mm -hmm. and you feel grateful. You feel grateful that people have embraced it in such a way and that it resonates and it means something to people mm -hmm. because, you know, you do the song and it's, it's, like, it's like a three-minute three minute pop song, but you want that, that people then elevate it to something more mm -hmm. and, and, and use it for, for big occasions. Yeah, it makes you feel happy. Mm -hmm. Does. Does. So we're going to play out right now and uh, we will be catching up with Heather uh, for the last time on the other side of this. Oh, now we're going to go into the last song. It's gone very quickly today, Heather, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Say it like you mean um, it. No, I've enjoyed myself totally. I'm out. <laughs> She's out, out. I'm out. It's amazing. We're chatting. Go in. I'm chatting, real people. Honestly, Come on now. We're both talkers. What so. Oh, yeah, yeah. What more could I want? <laughs> we're going to go into Proud. Uh, Linda says uh, this was adopted for the 2012 London Olympic bid. Uh, how proud, like it, uh, were you when the bid was won? Uh, you know, I always believed in the Olympics. I put my head above the parapet very, very early. And, you know, I, we are a sporting nation. We might not win everything. And I mm. did say at the time, you know, to be an Olympian and to compete in your own, in your own country. I, I mean, when you, I, I go on, on tour and I get to some of those, those towns, the, the response is so wonderful. It's so beautiful. And people are really responsive. And, and nurturing. So even if you came in last, I said they'll stay there and cheer the last person on. Exactly what I said happened. And we had a glorious two weeks. Oh. I, I went away on holiday to Mexico, and um, some of the I was talking to some of the staff, and they were talking about the Olympics. And I said, and they said, you know, there was only one thing that was wrong with the Olympics. I said, what? They said it's too short. I'm like, you know, job job done. People just absolutely enjoyed it. And we got a hall. You got a medal hall. You know, Paralympians and Olympians. So it was just fantastic. And that bon ami, that camaraderie, you know, that only sport and music really and anything, anything live with people bring to, to any endeavour. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was and to be part of it was, was fantastic. Oh, lovely memories. Well, uh, we're going to play that song out on the show now. Uh, but Heather, we want to remind everyone to get tickets for your upcoming tour, <laughs> don't like we? It, I like I'm it. I'm a good salesperson. <laughs> there was no segue or anything, just cold like that. Yeah, go and buy some tickets. <laughs> We're going to buy some tickets. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to see you on tour, aren't I? <laughs> we're going to put details on the screen below uh, of how you can get hold of them. But Heather, it's this is pleasure. amazing because it's got warmer in here. I'm yes. actually sweating now. Oh. Which is, yeah, sorry about I don't, that. I don't know. That's all right. She's sweating. That's uh, but right. It's been wonderful to talk everything, really. Ice creams and uh, put the world to rights yeah. and play out your amazing videos. That's kind. Uh, but no, honestly, this has been a real treat, especially for our Saturday night viewers. Um, I it's know been real fun. I can vouch for everyone at home. We've really enjoyed this. So thank, thank you. you. You're very kind. Oh, it's Heather Small, everyone. <laughs> Oh, huge. Thank you, Heather Small. What a real honour to have her here on tonight's show. And thank you for you at home for supporting the show. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. And here is that last song, Proud. <laughs>